The best-selling book in France this year has been a passionate story about a heroic American, Daniel Pearl. Mr. Pearl, of course, was the young Wall Street Journal reporter who was kidnapped and killed on camera in Karachi, Pakistan, during the U.S.-led war to depose the Taliban in Afghanistan. Bernard-Henri Levy's new book, Who Killed Daniel Pearl, has just been published in the United States after gathering much attention and acclaim in France. Mr. Levy, who was considered perhaps France's best-known celebrity intellectual, suggests that Daniel Pearl was not killed by his captors only because he was an American, or only Jewish, or only a journalist, but that he was a journalist who was close to breaking a huge story. Bernard-Henri Levy joins us in our studios. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, too. I'm very glad to be here. Outline for us, if you could, please, some of where your investigation took you. And, and, and we, we should explain, not just as a journalist, but you have a, I guess it's now an expired French diplomatic passport from doing work for the government. So you, you think you were able to penetrate places that some journalists have not been able to on this story. You know, I think that the task of a journalist is to go wherever he can by whatever means. There is no rule. You can go, frankly, you can go by uh, ruse, ruse yeah. by, uh, and so on. Uh, President Musharraf said about Daniel Pearl that he was over-intrusive. The duty of a journalist is to be over-intrusive, and we have to find all the ways to be over-intrusive. So, of course, I used all the ways possible. For instance, it is true, I went inside a madrasa, Mm -hmm. forbidden to foreigners, which is called the Binary Town Madrasa, a seminary, a holy school, half holy school and half military compound. And I entered there, not with a press card. They would not have let me in, mm -hmm. but with the diplomatic passport, expired since a few months, and I, I went like that. A at the heart of the premise of your book is the idea that it is the official Pakistani intelligence service, it's called the Inter-Services Intelligence Agency of Pakistan, that is implicated not only in, in the uh, kidnap and assassination of Daniel Pearl, but to your mind, a great many acts of terrorism all over the world. And of course, Pakistan is considered to be the bulwark of an alliance with the West against these forces. This is the point. Mm -hmm. We consider exactly as an ally the country where you have today the bigger concentration of jihadists and of Islamists. Do the people who hear us know that this ally, Pakistan, is the very country where Osama bin Laden himself has been hosted after the Afghan war that he circulated in the tribal areas between mm -hmm. Pakistan and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He probably was hosted in the seminary of Binary Town, of which we were speaking before, in the center of Karachi, in the center of the economic capital of Pakistan. And this cannot be done without the knowledge of the ISI. So this is a strange ally. You have huge quantities of people in Pakistan and also inside the ISI itself and also inside the little membership of the atomic scientists who think that the Pakistani bomb mm -hmm. belong to the entire Ummah, which is the community of believers, and especially to its vanguard, which is Osama bin Laden and mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda. I have to ask you about your meeting with Daniel Pearl's parents. Have you been able to share with the Pearls your idea that the Pakistani intelligence services are, are implicated in this crime and others? Of course we spoke of that. My thesis is the man who knew too much. Mm -hmm. I think they don't believe that. I think that they believe, more than I do, that he was killed because he was an American and he was a Jew, which is true, by mm -hmm. the way. Of course he was killed because of that. But I think, but on this point we disagree, that he was killed also because he was one of the best journalists in America. If you're on to something, you believe that this is a worldwide terror movement that is very close to obtaining a nuclear bomb. I don't say very close. I say two things. First thing, I say that Al-Qaeda wants to be able to build some dirty weapons. They think of that since a long time. This was a thing which was told to me 
by Commander Massoud, the anti-Taliban leader of the Northern Alliance in Afghanistan, who was killed just before who September. Who was killed 11. on the 8th of September, two years before his death, he told me, "Be careful, Osama bin Laden is the most dangerous." man in the world. He is preparing acts of terrorism of a completely new style and if one day he, he achieves to get some dirty weapons it will be terrible. This is one point. The other point, in a trade you have to have a seller and a buyer, of course, in any mm -hmm. trade. In this one too, you have some people who want to buy and you have some people who want to sell. As I told you, you have in Pakistan some scientists who are good scientists, like sort of Oppenheimers, you know, mm -hmm. Pakistani Oppenheimer, who think in faith that their duty should be to give what they know, to give the secrets of the atomic Pakistani weapon to these people of Al-Qaeda. You have in Pakistan some GNO, some non-governmental organization, so-called charities, which real target is to channel some of these informations very sensitive to these groups inside the tribal areas between Afghanistan and Pakistan, or even in Taliban-controlled areas of Afghanistan. So I say that you have some people who want, you have some people who are ready to give. Our duty today is to prevent this terrible deal. If this deal is concluded, if this trade is done one day, then I fear that the World Trade Center collapse could appear as a sort of prehistorical act of terrorism. We could see worse than that. And that is one of the reasons why I wrote this book, to say that it can be even worse, and that the terrorists did not say their last word. Bernard-Henri Levy, his new book, Who Killed Daniel Pearl, has just been published in the United States. Mr. Levy, thanks very much. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you.